Buongiorno from Sicily. We're going to take you to Ottobrata, not a beer festival, but a celebration of the fall harvest and also the hand craftsmanship in Zaparana at Nea. Greatest place on the East Coast to have a festival, and she's taking you there today. I'm not even going to say a word. Just feast your eye on that. The Iris. Iris. All the handmade crafts. This is really something else. This guy has been here forever. I wish they were teaching some of this stuff in schools. And here are the honeys of Etna. Very unusual, the chestnut honey. Here's a eucalyptus, uh, miele fiore de arancia, orange, and miele fiore, which is a thousand flowers. And all of them have different health benefits. Well, this is something I've never seen before. This is a Sicilian toy. It's called Gallinera. Uh, wax. So it, you know, it's changed somehow. You see? Wow. I've never seen that. This is wax. This is the one that Sicilians have a beautiful tradition of saying that the fall is sort of like a rebirth because it's been such a hot and steamy summer now. It's a little bit cooler. It's mid-October and I'd say it's about 75 degrees, 80 even, under the sun. And it's a time for people to come out, enjoy the nature, enjoy the fall harvest. So a Sicilian rebirth. How beautiful is that? Avellino. Lino? Avellino. Oh, castagne. Castagna, buona. Calda. Oh, you know what this is? These are carrots. And in ancient Roman times, these were used to measure gold because each seed in here has the equal weight and size. It's a very unusual thing, and so that's how they were able to measure. You heard of this before? Carrot, where do you think the carrot came from? Right here, the carrot. So now you know. Grazie, gentilissimo. This is Amaranca, is an award-winning Crispelle de riso, and it's served with honey. Buongiorno. This is not the crispelle that you're used to in the North End. This is made out of rice or North End or Florence or you know the Boston area. We have the crispelle, canola, grappa, iris, iris, pistachio iris, which is a typical local sweet. And there's the Duomo. Look at all this from Puglia. 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 You can go nuts here. Look at this bread and focaccia. of the pastries, the sausage, oh, it's heaven. And they're always making something delicious. <laughs> All getting sausages with peppers and onions. Quite an operation going on here. All age 
groups. That's what I love to see. This is a very typical fall scene here in Sicily. It's really, you know, called the rebirth because all the new types of fruits are out right now. These are the Etna um, apples, Mele Cotogna, that you make jam and bus and all kinds of um, sweets with it. You can't eat that, it's not very delicious. And we have the chestnuts. This is the period of chestnuts. So everywhere you'll see scenes like that of them roasting chestnuts, the walnuts from Etna, and also avocados. Believe it or not, we have a lot of tropical foods, a lot of tropical vegetables, and also fruit. And there's the Fiki di India, which is really not from India. Uh, basket different dimensions support each of these baskets. And Tina, some others that they use more for oranges, but it's something they use to win a little bit of fire, you know, when you want to uh, get the fire going. You can protect the bottles of olive oil or wine or also uh, aceto, which is vinegar from the sun. Great idea. There's the third level. It's the never-ending festival. Lunchtime and everyone's sitting on the steps eating. Mangoes and avocados from Sicily and pomegranate. A lot of people are surprised when I tell them that. This is what I like to see. Old traditions being made right in front of you. Buongiorno, come ti chiami? Salvatore. Salvatore, da quanti anni sta facendo? Eh, quando ero piccolino. Quanto? Quando ero piccolino. Eh, 50 anni? <laughs> 60? <laughs> Since he was little guy, he said 50, 60, I think he's a little bit older, but the 43rd annual, and every single year it just keeps growing. You know, this is one of the biggest gastronomical festivals in southern Italy and for sure in Sicily. I haven't seen anything like that before. Every Sunday only in October. You know, they're normally known for their honey. They have the best honey producers, in my view, in all of Sicily and probably all of uh, Italy. The honey is just spectacular. They probably have the best sauce, sausage and pork-type products uh, there is up there. Gorta cannolis, the gelato made from ricotta. People drive many miles to go up there. This is a very blessed area. It's the last town before the Etna Park getting into Mount Etna. That's how that's how blessed this area is. It's really a great place. It's really fascinating to see how big this festival has become. And it's also one of the most organized. You think about it, there's three levels. Thousands of people go there, and again, every Sunday. And I suggest, you know, you saw some of the scenes were very, very busy. If you go around 2, 3 o'clock, things start calming down a little bit. So in the morning on Sundays, Path and be prepared to stand in line because the traffic going up there is just crazy. It's an economic bonanza for Zephyron. It's a small little town. Remember, that was a town that just a few years ago was devastated by an earthquake, Esther, remember? Yeah. So the in money's that come in. 2018? 2018? Yeah. Oh, December 26th. That's right, December 26th. So, we were in Rome and everyone was talking about the earthquake. And there are some sections that are still, still closed. Destroyed. They're still yeah. closed. So to me, Going up there and spending money for the local, uh, the local, uh, you know, farmers and so forth, is a blessing for them and also for the surrounding areas too, because they have to travel to different uh, little towns to get there. So maybe they stop for lunch or get gas or buy trinkets or whatever. It's a good economic boon for a tiny little uh, struggling city. For sure. This is Vanessa. She's our guide today, but she also lives in Zafarana. Zafarana is such a special town. We just love going to Ottobrata. Can you talk a little bit about the history of Ottobrata? The Ottobrata is our main event in Zafarana. 
which is small enough town. So what we do is we celebrate uh, wine, the production of wine, uh, and to celebrate each, each month of October, every year on the Sunday, um, we taste the new wine and usually it's combined with you know, local products like chestnut and mushrooms. And it's just after the harvest time. So it's a way to taste the quality of the new wine, but at the same time, uh, it's to wish good luck for the way the wine is going to stay for a year, you know, during the fermentation and so on. So it's a good wish. It's one of the biggest gastronomical festivals it in is. southern Italy, right? Uh, it is, and it's becoming, I feel, more and more popular um, because we get, originally it was only for the locals, you know, to, to have to spend the Sunday out. Uh, I feel it's becoming, a lot of other people are coming over because they're curious about and the quality of the products, it's very high. Very high, yeah. Uh, and yeah. Ottobrata is in Zafaranetnea where you live and, mm -hmm. you know, unfortunately there was an earthquake in 2018, but before that there was a lava flow that was yes. miraculously stopped by the statue of Mary. That's right, yes. Well, living on the slope of an active volcano, obviously, you have to take into account that things like that can happen. It's some sort of a compromise. So we're very, I think the best word is fatalistic about it. Yeah, we just wait and see what happens. So yes, 2018, Christmas night actually, um, to do with volcanic activity. So the earthquake was a volcanic earthquake and it made a lot of damage around Zafferana. They're only starting to rebuild uh, now. And 1992 is the lava flow you're talking about. So one of the many, <laughs> we brought the Virgin Mary, which is our saint, local saint patron, in a procession. And once it got to a certain spot, Piano dell'Acqua, the lava flow stopped. Miracle. Well, that's one way <laughs> to see it, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> um, do you, the people of Zafarana, I get asked this all the time, are they worried about the lava flow? We are, I speak for myself, but I guess I'm speaking for most of us. Um, we're more worried about seismicity, earthquakes in general, because they're very sudden. And like it happened in 2018, nobody died, but there was a lot of, people were scared, um, a lot of fear. Uh, lava flows always leaves you, you know, they leave you time. We feel like Mount Etna is um, a friendly enemy somehow, because, <laughs> sorry, not sure about, That's beautifully you know, described. but you know, it always gives you, it, she does what she's meant to, you know, she does exactly what she wants to do, but at the same time, she leaves you time. So you might lose your property, your house in the worst case, but, you but not your warning. life. Uh, yes, exactly, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Otto Brata, this Oktoberfest that you saw is part of our October tour, Fall Fling, and we'll have a repeat of it in 2024, and we still have some spots open. So if you want more information, go to www.youmeetandsicily.com, and you'll find all of our tours. Our 2024 tours are up there. I'm a happy man. Why are you a happy man? Because I was reading today that the, for the first time in 500 years, listen to this. Oh, yeah. Beavers, like I'm talking about the furry ones, the animals, have appeared for the first time up in Trentino because they repopulated beavers in Austria and they're finally coming over to Italy. You see, things like that, beavers and those types of animals that aren't too, too big, They've been overhunted for centuries. There's nothing over here bigger than, I don't know what, a cat <laughs> in Sicily, believe me. Maybe in the mountains you find the boars and stuff, but I hope that those types of animals... Well, there's some foxes up in Etna too, right? There are some. Yeah. But other than that, man, there's no small little guys like a beaver. I'm so happy. I'm going to buy myself a beaver hat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to Catania. Imitation beaver hat. Let's go to Catania for... A little snippet, just a minute or two from the fish market in Catania.
What do you like? Oh, we have a little bit of a little bit of a little You know, the thing about the fish market and a lot of other places like this is, I keep saying it, but it never gets old. Visiting at different times of the year and also, you know, you have the same uh, characters at the fish market that you saw, but they're always doing something new, so it's really fun. Today, this weekend, I made some really good new friends. I made, uh, I made friends based on a recommendation of a, a good pal of mine from um, Rhode Island, Narragansett, Rhode Island, by the name of Michelle one of my former students, she referred to me to four people, and I took them on a private tour onto the background, the back end of uh, Marnette. We had a great time. But this guy, Mike, <laughs> he was a retired guy from, uh, he lives in Revere right now, and his beautiful wife, Jennifer, and Chrissy, who was a friend of my friend, Michelle, and this other man from uh, uh, Portugal. We had a delightful time together. But Mike has a service where he gives private tours around Boston Harbor. How's that? Very good. Beautiful cool. little boat. He goes around, take two, four, six, eight, ten people. And if you're ever in Boston and you want to take a trip, send me a message and I'll refer you to my pal Mike. I gotta tell you. I really that. like this guy the a lot. The funniest thing that with our October tour too, I think half of the group of 18 are from the Boston area. This time, Such yeah. great people. Also people from uh, New Jersey and Florida and Wisconsin. But I've really enjoyed, you know, people coming into our lives for a short while. And they come in as clients and we leave as friends. And that's the best part. Listen. We break bread together every day. And then we become friends. It's wonderful. You know, Esther, they say that Cicely's a jealous mistress. I guarantee you that Cicely bit Mike. Some of those people. He'll be back for sure. Well, and some of the And beautiful people. wife, Jennifer, she'll <laughs> be back. They were Owe and Owe and Chrissy, the same thing. This other gal, Chrissy, who I really like. I think the bug, the Cicely bug be oh bit my God. Our, our tour, our group as well. So it's, it's been really great. great. It was, it's been a great month. The weather's been great. Now, this, is, this was our last formal big tour of the year, am I yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. So now, I'm getting ready to start, I'm washing my underwear as I'm talking right now, because I'm going home on the 28th of the month for a couple of weeks of R&R. I'm &R. holding down the fort, as they Esther say. Esther will be here, but we'll be back I next a, week though, right? Yeah, normal any? time, normal day, uh, Sunday, 4 p.m. Sicily time, and if you're enjoying this content and haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing because it really does help us. And liking, so too. You. As Peter uh, Schipoletti says, something like, it does something <laughs> hit if the you but, like. Hit, right? hit, the but, hit the like button. It does something. I don't know what it does with the YouTube people. They like it when you like <laughs> it. So if you could do me a favor and like it, I'd appreciate that. All right. All right. That was fun. Wasn't that fun? That was a good time today. Yeah, I had right, a good honey. time. All right, honey. Anything else? Right now we're going to a fantastic cooking demonstration. I can hardly wait to see how it's going to be. <laughs> Ciao. <laughs> so, I'm you. My dad, Jim, we love you.
Tchau.